everyone. It is Friday, September 2nd. Crazy, I know, but here we are. So happy Friday. Uh, Kelly Westland with you here today, and uh, we're continuing on for just a few more days in our uh, study of spiritual disciplines. And today's uh, discipline is discernment. Now, this often, we, we think of discernment when it has to do with making a decision that is difficult for us to make. And I don't know how you are uh, when it comes to making decisions, but I know we all have our own ways of doing that. Um, some It's harder for some of us than for others. Like, how many times have you had that conversation? What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. You know, <laughs> sometimes even the simplest decision, like what to wear each day or what to have for breakfast can be difficult to make in, in certain frames of mind or certain circumstances or just whatever's going on at, at the time. Other times decisions to make and we feel comfortable with the decision that we've made and, um, we feel like it's where God is leading us, and that's great. But for the times when making a decision is a little bit more difficult, we can use a practice known as discernment. And so James 1 verse 5 is the verse I'd like to use kind of as our theme verse for today. Uh, and James writes, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. So what this tells me is if you find yourself in a place where you're trying to make a decision and you're really not sure what you should do, um, then it's time to take that decision to God. And we tend to leave that sometimes to the very last thing, but wouldn't it be great if we could practice this so often that whenever we have a decision to make, we go to God first and foremost. And so um, discernment means that we are taking the time to pray. Not only are we taking the time to ask, but we're taking the time to listen for what God has to share with us. And we'll hear that in a variety of different ways sometimes. You know, God speaks to all of us differently. Sometimes it's through what we read in scripture. Sometimes it's in the quietness of our prayer. We hear a thought in our head and we and we realize, hey, that's God telling me something here. I better listen up, right? Sometimes it's a little nudge in a certain direction or another. Sometimes I know for me, um, if I know the right decision, but I don't really want to make that decision, I will feel just all kinds of like nervous tension inside my body, pushing me to go uh, the way that God is calling me to go on that decision. So there's, like I said, a lot of different ways that you might find that God is speaking to you when you ask him for wisdom, when you ask him for help to make a decision. So the most important thing there is that you take the time to do this. There's a couple of other steps too. We'll get to those in a minute. But first and foremost, you want to actually take the time to settle yourself into a space for prayer and simply share with God what it is that's on your mind, what the decision is, what, you know, what makes you excited about a positive decision um, or a yes to that decision, what makes you feel good about a no to that decision, and then flip those around. One of the things that you want to pay attention to is what is called feelings of consolation and desolation. I'm trying to find the de definition here for you real quick. So consolation are those feelings that are life-giving, um, things that bring to you um, the, the fruit of the spirit, right? Love, joy, peace, faith. Um, if you are feeling at peace with a certain choice on a decision, then maybe that's your body telling you that is the right one, right? If, on the other hand, you feel emotions that are life-taking or life-thwarting, 
um, then you might want to think twice about this particular decision. So if this choice gives you feelings of turmoil or confusion or anxiety, um, you feel like everything is chaotic, like God is far away, then maybe um, you need to consider that that should not be your choice. Sometimes there's fear involved or shame involved or accusation involved. These are all things to pray about and take to God. Tell him, this is how I'm feeling about this right now. And then stop and give some quiet time to uh, let God respond to you about that. Another thing you can do as you're praying is talk to God about what this decision might look like over the long term. You know, maybe uh, it looks really good right now, but in a few months, it, maybe it just wouldn't really fit with your life or the things that are going on. And so if it doesn't look like it's going to be a good fit in the long term, maybe that, again, is a red flag for you. But if, if as you are praying about this, you feel feelings of peace and comfort and um, a, a knowledge that the spirit is right there cheering you on to make that choice, then you probably are on the right track. Now, again, this has a lot to do with our own motivation. And this is something that you also need to talk to God about in prayer. If your motivation is something different than what you sense the spirit telling you, you really need to take a look at that. Is this coming out of a sense of um, self-preservation? Is it coming out of a sense of selfishness? Is it coming out of uh, a sense of um, you want what's right for me, not necessarily what's right for someone else? Maybe you need to think about those things and how God would, how God would respond to those feelings as well. Um, sometimes it helps if you think about a decision that you made that either went really well or did not go so well and um, what the consequences were in that situation. And is it anything that might make a difference in the decision that you're making now? Sometimes we make decisions in times of high stress. Um, it's not uncommon for people who are grieving to make a really big decision like to sell a house or to sell a car or to buy a car or to buy a house or, you know, any of those big momentous decisions at a time when their own uh, emotional stability is a little bit off um, or, you know, things are just overwhelming. It's never good to make a decision in those kind of situations. You want to hold off until things are kind of calming down um, and until you have a chance to really think through the decision and is this the best choice for you right now. The other thing that is really good to do in this situation is once you've taken it to God and you may pray about it many, many times. You know, don't think that you're going to just sit down and pray about it once, because sometimes it's going to take several times of prayer. And in between those times of prayer, you can ask for um, godly advice and counsel from your friends who you know um, are spiritually mature, who can help you pray over this situation or talk through this situation and help you discern if the decision or the choice that you're trying to make is a good one. Um, you know, there have been times in my life, life where I've shared something I've thought about doing with someone else and they've said, mm, I don't think that's in God's will for you. And maybe you need to think about it a little bit more. And maybe at the time I was a little bit upset with that response, but the more I thought about it and the more I prayed about it, the more I saw that was that was the truth, that what I wanted was my will and not God's will. And so it's important to take that into consideration as well and to get um, good counsel on different situations. You know, it might be a friend. It might be a financial advisor that you trust a whole lot to. Um, and then you can pray about that conversation that you had. So there's a lot of things, a lot of 
um, different steps that go into decision making and discernment. But the most important, I think, truly, is to take this um, situation to God in prayer and really spend time with him and and remembering to spend time telling him how you feel about it, what your choice would be and why, but then also taking the time to listen to see if God wants the same thing for you and why or why not. All right. Uh, it's a lot, I know, um, but I think that we can all make better choices if we take our choices to God in prayer and ask him for that wisdom uh, that we need to make the best choice for our situation and for our own uh, lives, especially, <laughs> here's another thought, especially when our decisions <clears throat> might also affect someone else, our children, our family, um, people that we work with, those kinds of things. We want to make sure that we are <clears throat> making choices that are going to also be beneficial for those around us um, in a way that is in God's will too. So it's a lot to think about, um, but I think that as we practice discernment more and more, that we get better and better at hearing God's voice and listening to the nudges of the Holy Spirit and even the nudges of our <clears throat> trusted friends and advisors that we have around us. So let's take a moment now and pray together and then we will say goodbye for today. So let's pray. Lord God, uh, we thank you that it is as simple as coming to you in prayer to ask for wisdom. Lord, you want us to make wise choices and to, um, to weigh all of the different sides of each decision that we make. You want us to um, make choices that follow your will, God, not just our own, not just our own wants and desires, but the things that, that you know are right and good for each of us. And so, Lord, help us in this practice of discernment to spend time with you in prayer, to spend time listening as much or even more than we do talking, to take these decisions that we have to our uh, trusted friends and family and advisors to ask for their thoughts and opinions on it as well. God, decisions can be a hard thing to do sometimes. And we want to make the wisest choices possible for ourselves, for our family, for those that they might uh, affect in other ways. So God, give us wisdom. Help us to hear your voice. Help us to be aware of those nudges from the Holy Spirit, of the feelings that you um, have created our bodies to feel uh, so that we can make those choices in the best way possible. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time together. And we look forward to getting together again next week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, my friends, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Remember, we're here for worship at 8 30, 11, and 5 o'clock on Sunday. We'll have coffee in between services so you can join in and chat with each other for a little while. Uh, we're looking forward to Sunday School kickoff coming on September 11th, where we'll get started with a lot of our different fall activities. We also have the block party coming up on September 10th. Uh, that's Saturday. It is a great, great time to spend time with your uh, congregation family, but then also our neighbors in our neighborhood around the church. We, we um, really have a good time each time we've done this. And we've heard lots of wonderful responses from our neighbors about how much they really look forward to and enjoy the block party with us. And so we hope that you'll come out. If you can spare a little bit of time to volunteer, we'd really appreciate it. It takes probably about 40 to 60 people to put on the block party. And um, so we can use all the help we can get. Um, but in the meantime, have a great weekend. Be blessed. And make sure you take some time to pray about those big decisions you have. All right. Have a good day. Bye-bye.